Hi, I'm Kyle Gilbert, and I'm Vice President for Communication at Media Alliance International. A few months ago, we finished the first stage of our office video production studio, and I recorded a video about how we were using OBS and the ATEM Mini Pro for our video setup. Since then, we've made several significant upgrades for our studio to speed up our workflow and improve the functionality of our space. In this video, I'm going to share about a few different areas, including the overall setup, including new components that we've added over the past few weeks. Before I even get started, I want to thank Brian Bailey, the media director at Preston Wood Baptist Church, for his significant help in building out our studio. Brian serves on our board, and he's an amazing guy with a ton of knowledge in the media realm. At Media Alliance International, where I work, we connect, train, and encourage international leaders in Christian media. We travel internationally a few times a year to provide media training, but we use our studio to extend our connection to our international friends and donors. We typically record in our studios multiple times a week. Let me show you how we're taking our studio to the next level. We moved from an ATEM Mini Pro to a full ATEM 2 ME Production Studio 4K with an ATEM 1 ME Advanced Panel for the interface. We're also now using a HyperDeck Studio 4K Pro for dedicated recording. And we're routing sound through a Tascam Model 12. Rather than having to use our office laptops, we now have two dedicated M1 Mac Minis. All of these, including the Mac Minis, are mounted into a small rolling rack enclosure. In case it might be helpful to you, I've included a full detailed wiring diagram in the video description. All right, let's talk about Zoom. Since we record video interviews and want as little post-production as possible, we ISO out each video from Zoom and run them into our video switcher as individual video feeds. This allows us to have complete control over each video shot, and we can switch from person to person as though everyone is in the same room. The way we're able to achieve this is by using two pieces of software, Zoom ISO and Black Siphon. Zoom ISO connects to the Zoom feed to pull each video into a separate window. Then, the free Black Siphon software directs each Zoom ISO video into a different output on our DeckLink Duo 2, which is connected to one of our Macs with a Sonnet Echo Thunderbolt enclosure. When it's set up, it's pretty amazing to see in action. The Zoom feed is especially powerful when using the ATEM Super Source to composite shots together that allows us to show more than one person at a time on video with customized background and foreground graphics. Here, we're using a background video that's been added to the ATEM Media Player, but we could also include another graphic layer over the top if needed. Controlling the onset television. We often use an onset television, like I'm doing now, to bring our Zoom guests into the room for a two shot with our president, Dr. Ron Harris. But there are also times when it's useful to have other content on screen during the same presentation like when we open this recent video with a graphic and then quickly cut back to the guest. We're able to control the screen using an aux out on our switcher. Then to change the content on the TV, all we have to do is change the source that's routed to that aux output in the ATEM control software. We can improve this workflow by running macros on the video switcher. Once those are set, we can change from one aux source to another with the push of a button on our macro bus. When we initially ran our graphics through OBS, we've been able to greatly improve the speed and workflow by switching to ProPresenter. Graphics, lower thirds, and video can now be quickly added into the show, and we've expanded our use of Stream Deck's interface by using the open source companion software to control both ProPresenter and the ATEM video switcher together, which even allows you to stack multiple commands into a one button push. This change to ProPresenter is also a major update because now we're sending both the graphic key and fill signals out from our Ultra Studio 4K Mini 
to the video switcher. This keeps us from having to deal with green screen, chroma backgrounds in our graphics, and instead gives us quick and easy alpha keying. We can now quickly add photos, video, and other graphics to our shows, even animated lower thirds. Real Vision has an excellent video on how to set this up, so check out their video. All right, let's talk about our next level teleprompter setup. Primarily, we use our prompters for running scripts, but we found that there are many times when it's useful to send other sources to the prompters. So instead of running the teleprompters via iPad, we use a more flexible setup. We send the teleprompter software out of our computer and then into the video switcher. That allows us to then use the second mix effect on our switcher to control the teleprompter monitors. Now, we're able to switch any content going into our video switchers over to the teleprompter screens. And our host can look the guests directly in the eye as he talks to them. All right, let's talk about our sound setup. We're using a Tascam Model 12 to control audio. We send both wireless microphones, ProPresenter and Zoom ISO into the board. Then we use Aux 1 from the board to send a mix minus IFB signal to our host using a wireless pack. And we use Aux 2 from the board to send a mix minus back to the Zoom guests. The Focusrite Scarlett Solo handles routing audio to and from the Mac Mini running Zoom ISO. And just a note, though the video feeds are ISO'd, you only get a combined audio feed from that software. For lighting, we have an Aperture 120D Mark II with a Light Dome 2 for our key light and several newer brand LED panels for fill, hair, and background lighting. These LED panels are hung from the ceiling grid by impact scissor mounts for drop ceilings. All of our lights are run into Casa brand power strips or plugs so that they can be grouped together and controlled. And as we add new studio sets to our studio, we'll mount new lights and group them in the Casa app as well. And I still love that these lights can be controlled with an Alexa voice command. Hey Alexa, turn on the lights. I hope that this video will be a help to you as you think about ways to improve your studio or worship center workflows. If you have any great new ideas or questions about the setup, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to check out the wiring setup I've linked in the description. Thanks for watching.